Yay Networks. What up, y'all? We are back to talking about One House. One House, having that One House, creating yes. that culture of care. I, I really hope that y'all, like if you didn't get a chance to listen to last week's episode, I'd encourage yeah. you to listen to it. It's uh, it's insightful and funny. Um, but it, um, I hope that like you heard something in it and you actually had a conversation like with your, yeah. with your spouse, with your significant other, with your friends and like, yo, I, I have been a very controlling person. That was mm-hmm. something that, and that's no fun. Share? Yeah. Like feeling controlled by somebody makes me want to rebel mm-hmm. because I felt like I didn't have that cultural care with my dad growing up. Now, mm-hmm. mind you, I think as an adult, I would have gotten along really well with him, but right. he passed away. Mm-hmm. He was in his like seventies when I was 16. I know. I know. So you can imagine somebody who's <laughs> retired and done with life, dealing with teenagers who hate everybody. I hated everybody. I hated life as a teenager. And I wasn't, I was very toxic as a teenager. And um, I'm praying that curse is broken with our kids. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like, I was not the most kindest teenager. And I feel like we would have gotten along. Right. Mm -hmm. But I felt like the only time he talked to me growing up was when I was in trouble or if I was doing good in sports. And so then we get married and I felt like you wouldn't say anything when I was doing great things. But then if I need something corrected, you would, you wouldn't mention that. And I felt like, you know, in the beginning, like, dang, like you don't even see me. You know what I mean? You only see me when I do good stuff. Or you only see me when I do bad stuff, not when I do good stuff. And I started to look back at my own daddy trauma. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, he's not supporting me. He's not building me up. He's not encouraging me what I am doing right. And he's tearing me down for what I'm doing wrong. And so I felt like there was that culture of control in that sense where I was just like, I don't feel supported. And then what I did is I went and talked to my girlfriends and I bashed my husband. And I'd be like, can you believe he's like this? And he's treating me like this and he's doing this. And so we all are on our own rabbit trail of frustration, right? Mm -hmm. But now I feel like it's this culture of like peace and love. And it's like, you give me room and space to be who I am. I give you room, space to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And now we have such an amazing relationship. I don't feel controlled. Like, I don't feel, I feel like I can be myself with you. I can just relax. Oh, yeah, be yourself. But but everybody has that desire. And I even realize that with our children. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be controlled. They don't. Roman is five, and he does not want to be controlled. At all. I mean, I'm learning to guide him, not control him, but guide him. Because and there's a difference. There is. Like, for example, the other day, Roman screamed on the phone. He said, H, yeah. Hell, yeah. And I said, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where do you get that from? <laughs> but he said it with his chest. I was like, yeah. where'd you get that from, friend? Right. And my husband's probably very proud over there. Um, I didn't hear it. That's right. No, when I told you. Yeah, when you told me, I was like, for real? But, you know. So then funny. I told Roman, I'm like, oh, obviously, you know, he doesn't know that that's not something. Right. So I was like, hey, um, so hell is a place. And it's really not a word that we use in that context. Maybe you say, heck yeah, or oh yeah. You know, let's find something else because I don't want you in kindergarten screaming that out loud. Yeah, that wouldn't be cool. That one at, at your Christian private, Christian, private school. Christian school, <laughs> right? So he was like, he's like, bruh. He's like, I didn't know anything was wrong with that word. Yeah. And I was like, that's correct. You know what I mean? So that's like guiding him and showing him. Yeah, that's and guidance. Because like in, uh, in, in the culture I grew up in, you know, you just got a whooping and that's not, that's not discipline. That's child abuse. Yeah. Because there is no guidance. They don't know what, what they did wrong. They don't know They're what like, they did yeah. wrong. So then now, you know, you're like, well, I look at a lot of my cousins and stuff like that. And I, I see how we all got whoopings and it's like, you know, they, they, they just went off into a full stage rebellion because what a culture of control does, it says, I'm going to do one or two things. Either I'm going to hide or I'm going to fully rebel. Yeah. And parents that are right now who have older kids, if you had a culture control in your house, Mm -hmm. your kids are either hiding what they're doing Mm -hmm. or they're fully rebelling. They're all out rebelling. Do you know the whole thing about PKs, Mm -hmm. the pastor's kids? Yeah. You know, and people be like, well, you know, them pastor kids, they just be living any type of way. Well, that's because number one, they're human. Number Mm -hmm. two, you don't give them space to be human. Number three, in their humanity, you judge them. And then number four, they've lived in such a culture of control of how they should live and how they should and what they're expected to be like at home and at church 
they finally they gotten to the point of saying screw it screw it and then that's the reason I'll never why measure up to you that's the reason why you know she's 15 16 years old pastor's daughter and she's pregnant well i didn't know she was having sex that's because she was hiding it from you and mm-hmm. then she just come out and just say you know what screw it i don't care what any of y'all think i'm gonna live my life and i'm gonna do what i do do whatever you want to do whichever way that's what happens in a culture control a culture care says i'm gonna bring this back in like you did with roman hey babe you know what we don't reuse that in the same context. Like that was a different context. Like, ah. And it's like, well, I didn't know. And it's yeah. like, I know, but like, we're going to use yeah. a different context. We're going to yeah. say, oh yeah. Or something like yeah. that, you know, because you know, it's more child appropriate, blah, blah, blah. And you're <laughs> right. like, okay, okay, cool. And so now because in a culture of care, mm-hmm. I don't have to hide it anymore. Mm-hmm. Like Logan, you know, my kids, when I, when I get in the car with them by myself, my kids become bosses. They tell us all the tea. They, and it's like, it's like all the tea. Like Logan, Logan be like, Dad, you like, you know, like my my Spotify, I have a family plan, but I couldn't get his his to work. So I was like, Logan, just just log into mine from your phone and then you just create a playlist. So now I'm in the gym listening to my playlist, and all of a sudden I hear his playlist come on. And I'm like, dang, he listens to it. I gotta turn over to Apple Music. But anyway, he puts his play he puts his playlist on. I'm riding the car with him and like we're sitting there, we're listening, we're listening, I'm listening to his playlist. And he's like, Dad, what do you think about my songs? I was like, man, these things are bangers, bro. I was like, well, what, what do you really feel like they mean? You know, and having a conversation with him that doesn't mm-hmm. belittle him mm-hmm. or make him feel ashamed mm-hmm. or saying, I don't want you to listen to that junk mm-hmm. because then that only per- creates a culture that says mm-hmm. I need to hide what I'm listening to. Because here's the thing, he gonna listen to it anyway. Yeah. So I might as well create a culture of care that says, I see you. Mm-hmm. I recognize you. Mm-hmm. I'm riding with you. Mm-hmm. Bro, we good. Tell mm-hmm. me what you think about them lyrics, though. Mm-hmm. You know, because I have an understanding of them. Because it opens up the conversation and it makes them feel like they can, they're safe and they can ask you anything. Yep. Like Taylor was sitting over by the couch one day and she was like, Mom, um, what does having sex mean? Like, what does sex mean? And I was like, okay. And I did not give her the, the PG version. <laughs> I said, so a man has a penis. Hopefully they're married. Sometimes it happens where they're not married. But like how I came, my parents weren't married. Okay. A man takes his penis and he puts it inside of her vagina. And then he releases a sperm and it goes to the egg and it fertilizes. <laughs> it fertilizes. Right. And then it plants into her uterus. And then the baby grows. And then after nine months. So Taylor's face hit the floor her jaw dropped she was like that's what sex means and she was like so that's how babies come to the earth Girl, and you have no idea you I said, enjoy your whole life <laughs> so i said yes and she was like i do not want um, my husband putting his penis anywhere near me and i just laughed and i said taylor she said then her face dropped again she said you and dad have had sex three times and so I was like, oh, baby girl, we have it more than that, honey. <laughs> we moved you over. Right. When you was asleep. Right. right. <laughs> so she was like, wait, you want to do that? I said, it's actually enjoyable. Very and God enjoyable. created sex for the, in the protection of marriage for your good. And it's enjoyable and it's fun. And I was like, you'll enjoy it within your marriage. She said, Mm-mm. she's like, I'm going to do it one time to get my twins. I said, no, Taylor. I said, you'll understand it more when you get older. But. The fact that she's like, I'm so glad you told me because she's like, the kids on YouTube said that the babies came another way and I just wasn't sure and I knew I could ask you. And so just creating that safe place in our home where we can talk about everything. I know they're going to be going into their teenage years Mm -hmm. and I want them to be able to open up. And I do realize with Logan, I can be so strict sometimes with him and I can and I can spiral a little bit with that one. I don't know what it is about him. (laughs) Maybe it's because he acts exactly like you. It makes me nervous. Yes, he's, he, he, Taylor he's acts me. exactly like me, so I'm somehow more graceful. But Logan might say something, and I'd be like ah! <laughs> screaming <laughs> on the inside. Like, no, my son is being tainted. No, not my sweet godly my sweet, baby godly that baby. I dedicated to the Lord a hundred times. Yeah, my son. Yo, man. I, <laughs> wait, and here, 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 here's how here's how I lead my kids. I ask questions. Like, you know, Logan got in the car up to school one day. He was like, oh, we're doing this D.A.R.E. program right now. And I was like, oh, D.A.R.E. talking about with drugs? He was like, yes. 
I was like, yo, I was like, what'd you think about drugs though? Like you learn about, what'd you think about them? He's like, well, I don't really understand what they're doing. So we had this conversation about drugs, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, you know, they get you loopy. And I was going through the whole thing. And he was like, he said, you ever done drugs? And I was like, yo, we had that whole conversation. He was like, whoa, he's like, okay, well, and we're still talking about it. And he was like, dad, I don't think that's ever something I want to try. And I was like, bro, that's a very healthy and very honest way of yeah. looking at the situation and recognize that ain't something you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, if you ever get in a situation where people trying to pressure you to do that, I said, just remember what you said. Like if that's in your value system, yeah. maintain that's in your value system. He was like, yeah, you're right. He's like, but can't nobody make me do anything anyway. He's like, I'm Logan. And I was like, <laughs> yes. you dog old Skippy, bro. Yes, I love you, that. You, you like that? That's you. And yeah. then he asked me. He asked me. He was like, so is alcohol like a drug? And I was like, well, you know, I quit drinking. And he was like, yeah, I know you quit. So I'm coming up on two years. And I said, but here's the thing, bro. I said, if you get to the point you get older and, you know, you decide you want to have a glass of wine or something like that. Mm -hmm. I said, hit me up. Like, I said, I said, I don't want you to go with your, I said, you know, it'd be dope if you went, if I took you. Like, we went together. Yeah. And he was like, dad, I want to experience everything first with you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, like, yeah. you know, that that's yeah. a culture of care. So yeah. even if he brings that to me and like, this is what I want to go do. Like, hey, do, do you understand? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, what do you think about this? Yeah. And really get in his mindset because that makes him as a child mm -hmm. feel like his word matters. Yeah. Because as a father, my responsibility is not, and your responsibility as a mother is not to tell them what to do. Yeah. It's to help guide them in yeah. their decision making so they recognize, oh, we all one house. It's interesting, babe. It's so good. He actually brought up the D.A.R.E. program to me, too. Yeah. And I said, so tell me, what do you think about it? And he's like, my parents probably asked me so many questions. I know. We ask questions all the time. Like, what do you I was think? Like, I was like, what do you think about it? He's like, you know, I didn't understand a lot of it. He's like, but a lot of that stuff is weird. He's like, I didn't understand it. And then he asked me about drugs. I said, honestly, I never did drugs growing up. I said, I went to an all-white school, and they did a lot of cocaine. And it's it's white, and it's powdery looking. Um, It looks kind of like baking soda. Um, but what they did is they have it in like these little bags and I'd watch them snort it in the gym class, like at gym time. And I always thought to myself, cause they would get high. And I always thought to myself, I never want to be controlled by anything. He's like, I'm the same way. Like, I don't want anything to like control me. You know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, I never, I never did it. Never touched it. And I was like, I just watched other people do it. Yeah. And it just was never my thing. Yeah. And even part of the conversation I had with him, I wanted to make clear that like, I was like, Logan, you understand something like that's in your value system. Yeah. I was like, so if you get around some of your, some of your friends, something like that, and you know that they're doing it, I said, that's not our job to like look down on them because that's not in their value system. I was like, you know, cause when dad goes on his trips, like some of my homies would be like, yo, just have a drink, have a drink. But in my value system, I'm not into alcohol. Yeah. So I'm like, I push yeah. that away, but I can still sit down with you. Mm -hmm. I have a cigar with you and I'll drink some tea. Mm -hmm. We good. We can still yeah. talk. We can still laugh. We can still yeah. have a good time. But it's in my value system. Yeah. And that's what and that's like what I want him and like Taylor and Roman yeah. to be able to hold on to, but to empower them. Yeah. So like when I they can leave run and house, talk to yeah. my parents. And but also like when they leave our house, I want them to feel confident and empowered in their decision making. Mm -hmm. Instead of being like, well, I don't know. Should, I don't know. Can we do this? Like, what does God want me to do? Or what What would dad do? It's like, who cares what dad would do? Yeah. Be empowered. Yeah. And have that have that type of thing. So, And this has been great, man. We've been having this some great discussions with y'all. It's, it's dope, man. But we love y'all. Yeah, we love y'all. Um, we're in this with y'all. Make yeah. sure you share this. Make sure when you go on, make sure you subscribe to our podcast. Subscribe. Yeah. Share it with like two or three of your friends. Like, do mm -hmm. that, please. Like just share the video, share the share the share the audio. We love that. But we love y'all. Introduces. We out this piece.